The objective of today's lecture is to look at a complex pose on zeros and body plots, and that's, again, the last building block we need to create body plots of any transfer function. So the objective today is to include that to the list of building blocks and then uh, just do some more exercises. And as I said, then Monday, uh, Wednesday, this Wednesday, you're going to do a few more exercises on body plots, and there will be the last lecture on this topic. Just a reminder of what we've done so far and why we are doing this. So if you have a system, G of S, that is subjected to a sinusoidal input, the output of that system is also a sinusoidal uh, waveform with the same frequency as the input, but with a phase shift and a magnitude shift. And that is provided that a G of S is linear time invariant. The advantage of this analysis is that we know the output form, it will follow this. And you see two changes compared to the input. A is the magnitude of the input. M is the magnitude of G of S at a given frequency. And phi is the phase of G of S at a given frequency. So if you, if you want to study the, the output of the system for a sinusoidal input, all we need to know is the phase and the magnitude of G of S. And that gives us all the information we need in order to calculate the output. And the phase and the magnitude are easily calculated through these two expressions that we've used in the last two lectures. The magnitude is the square root of the square of the imaginary plus the square of the real part of the transfer function. And the phase or the angle of the transfer function is the inverse tangent of its imaginary divided by its real part. So this is enough to characterize the frequency response of any system. And the Bode plot is a way to highlight these two elements here that differ between the input and the output, the magnitude and the phase of the transfer function. That's what you see in the Bode plot. And that Bode plot then gives us the picture of the frequency response of the system for any frequency. That's all the information we need in order to predict the output of the system given a sinusoidal input of varying frequency. So here is the body plot of a random function. And what you can see here is the magnitude and the phase for a range of frequencies. So as a reminder, when you plot the magnitude, we are using decibel scale, meaning that we are taking 20 log of the magnitude, log 10, and plotting it here. And for the fre frequency, we are also using a logarithmic scale. So what you see at the bottom here are actually powers of 10. And why are we doing that? Well, that's simply to highlight these changes in the body plot. If we are using a linear scale, all the uh, variation in the body plot, all the information would be concentrated in a small portion of it and everything else wouldn't be very visible. But uh, if you use the log scale, we can emphasize these parts where the phase and the magnitude are changing. And that's why we use that, okay? So when you buy anything, any electrical component or mechanical components, an actuator, a motor, anything will come with a body plot most of the time. And why is that? Because the body plot tells you again how you should operate this system, which frequency will take. After which frequency it's not, uh, or you can't operate that anymore. Or if you want to operate the system at a given frequency, the gain will be very small, meaning that it will need a very high input magnitude to create the output magnitude you want. So the applications of body plots are everywhere. And here is, here's one of them. If you end up working in industry in control systems, for example, frequency response is by far the most widely used method there for system identification and control. Let's assume you had a uh, just a black box, an electrical circuit. We don't know what is inside of that electrical circuit. We took a function generator and we applied a voltage to that circuit. And that voltage go, uh, has a, is a sinusoidal waveform, has a very low frequency, and then we start to increase the frequency slowly up to here, uh, 10,000 uh, hertz. So we go from 10 to the power of negative four up to 10 to the power of four hertz. And then we measure the resulting current. And from the resulting current, we divide that by the magnitude of the input voltage and we get the top graph, the magnitude in decibels. 
and we may we also measure the phase shift between the input and output, and we plot it there. That's the phase. So this could be determined experimentally without the need for any modeling. We don't know what the circuit is. Based on the what we obtained here, we can now infer the transfer function of the system without any prior knowledge of how the system is. What can we tell from this graph? We remember, remember from the last lecture, the building blocks we introduced, uh, poles at the origin, zeros at the origin, zeros at the origin, and the real poles and real zeros, and a gain. Based on this body plot, can you identify the presence of poles and zeros, for example? Do we know if there are any poles or zeros in this system? And where are they? The first thing we can we can look at is the fact that we have that flat line at negative 60 decibels. And that indicates that this system doesn't have any poles or zeros at the origin. Does that make sense? Because it is a flat line, the system does not have any poles or zero at, uh, zeros at the origin. How can I come to that conclusion? Oops. How did I come to that conclusion? Yeah. It's just a straight line. And if we had a pole or zero at the origin, it would be, it would go up or down, exactly. It would be a constant slope of plus minus 20 decibels. But because it's flat, there we can say that a, at low frequencies is flat, the system does not have any poles or zeros at the origin. Another indication of that is that the phase, the phase look at the phase starts at zero. If we had a pole or zero at the origin, the phase would start at plus minus 90 degrees. Right, so that's the first observation we can make. There are no poles or zeros at the origin. The body plot, when you go to low frequencies, has a slope of 0 dB per decade. This here, this flat line there, does not mean that we have no, no, they have no poles or zeros, because that a flat line could have been flattened by the addition of pole followed by a zero, right, and then it canceled out. So, but in low frequencies, we can see that in the low frequency, there is nothing happening. There is just a constant gain. So the only thing acting on the body plot up to this point here is indeed a constant gain. Up to something around 10 to the power of negative 2. So here in this area, we only have a gain. Let's call that a gain K. What happens now that you are moving towards the higher frequencies? What happens when you reach 10 to the power of negative two radians per second? What is making that a slope change? Is that a pole or is that a zero? It's a pole or is it a zero? It's a zero, right? It's a zero because the zero adds 20 decibels per decade to the slope. The pole would add the negative 20 decibels, would, which would make that go down, All right? So the zero is adding 20 decibels per decade because you see now the slope is going up. And we can, by just some, by looking at it, we can see that this goes up by 20 decibels per decade. So we went from zero dB to plus 20 decibels per frequency decade. Notice that the zero here, they did not make the body plot 20 dB. It simply added 20 decibels per decade to the slope of the body plot. So at 10 to the power of negative 2, we have a 0. Is this clear? There is a 0 there? Yeah. Look at the phase. The phase also started to go up. It didn't go up to... 90 degrees because it will, there's probably something pushing it back later, but if phase went up, if it was a pole, it would go down. It would go towards negative nine. And you can see now that the slope is constant, plus 20 decibels per decade, up to a new frequency there that is about 
uh, this is an approximation, of course, about 10 to the power of zero. No, that's a bit of a stretch. I think it's 10 to the power of negative one, maybe. Maybe around, around here. Yeah, that's more realistic. Around here, 10 to the power of negative one. We see that something happened there because the slope now has changed. Let's see if our assumption of a slope of plus 20 dB was right. At 10 to the negative two, we were at negative 60 dB. At 10 to the negative one, we are in minus 40. So we went one decade in frequency and the body plot went up 20 dB. But now what is happening at 10 to the power of neg negative one? We are still increasing the frequency. And when we reach 10 to the power of negative one, now the slope becomes flat again. What happens? That's a pole. That's a pole. The pole adds 20 decibels, negative 20 decibels per decade to the current slope that was plus 20 dB. It doesn't make the slope negative 20. It adds negative 20 to the slope right before that. So here we have a pole. And you can see the effect of the pole in the phase. The phase is now going downwards, right? It's going down from back to zero, back to where it started. And this, the slope now is zero dB per decade. We can continue to increase the frequency. And when you reach 10 to the power of two, negative yeah, 10 to the power of two approximately, we see another change in the slope. What is happening there? Another pole. And this new pole will make the slope negative, add negative 20 decibels per decade to the slope. The slope is zero now. It will become negative 20 dB per decade. So here is another Okay, so we have two poles, one zero, and we also have a constant gain that is shifting everything down. What is the transfer function of this thing? Well, the transfer function, let's call that a G of S. We have a zero at 10 to the power of negative two. So that it would be S divided by 10 to the power of negative two plus one divided by two poles, one at 10 to the power of negative one, and one at 10 to the power of two. And I'm writing this in the standard form we've been using for body plot analysis. What is missing here? The gain. Why is there a gain? If the, the gain was one, what would be the, the, the magnitude at 10 to the power of negative four? If there was no gain, we should start at zero, right? Because before any pole or any zeros, you would only have a constant that would be one, 20 log of one is zero. If this body plot didn't have any gain, it would start at zero dB, but it actually starts at negative 60. So there must be a gain somewhere that is shifting everything down. And it's shifting everything down by negative 60. So we can calculate that again that way. We can say that 20 log of that gain is negative 60. Where I'm taking this negative 60 here. And why am I taking the negative 60 there to calculate the gain? Because in that area, only the gain affects the body plot. If I pass any poles or zeros, then I have the gain and the effect of poles and zeros. So that is not a good spot to probe the gain. But if you go all the way to the left before we encountered any poles or zeros, then that's only the only thing acting there is the, the gain. So I can say that 20 log of gain is negative 60. And now so for k that way, we have log of k equals to three, negative three, k is 10 to the power of negative three.
we well the the smallest frequency we can get is something close to zero, right? But it can be zero. A zero frequency doesn't doesn't make sense. In the same way that a negative frequency doesn't make sense. Right? So so long as you go to the left of poles and zeros, it's assumed that there is nothing else to the left of that. We can now sub replace this k in the transfer function and just rearrange it, and it should give us something like this. If you want to write that in a more conventional form. Now, just playing with the numbers here and simplifying everything. Okay? So I see a question here. Basically, the magnitude increase in zero and decrease in poles on the plot. So let's get that straight. A pole adds a negative 20 decibels per decade to the slope of the body plot. A zero adds plus 20 dB per decade to the magnitude of the body plot. The pole adds negative 90 degrees to the phase. The zero adds 90 degrees to the phase. If the pole or zero is real, that is, they are placed on the real axis, then that effect will only be seen past their cutoff frequency right? once we encounter the pole. If the pole or zero is at the origin, then that is slope is added to the entire body plot. And the reason here, that we, uh, the, the fact that here that we have a constant slope at low frequencies means that there are no poles or zeros at the origin, otherwise that would be a non-constant slope. Any other questions here? No? Okay. So this is a good example, a practical example of body plot. We got, assuming that we got this curve here experimentally using a oscilloscope, we now have a transfer function of the system and you don't even know how the system was. And from this, we can calculate an equivalent electrical circuit, come up with an equivalent electrical circuit that results in this transfer function. All right, so let's move on. The next and last building block we need for the body plot is the complex conjugate poles or zeros. If you're now dealing with complex roots, we have to go back to our standard form of a second order transfer function, omega zero squared divided by a square plus two zeta omega zero s plus omega zero squared. And now re reconvert convert this equation into the standard form for body plot. That is, we're going to divide both the top of the equation and the bottom of the equation are multiplied by one over omega zero squared. And that's how we got this. By dividing the top and the bottom by omega zero squared, we have now the standard form. Let's see how this standard form is. We have the omega zero here over S, everybody's squared. Then we have S over omega zero here, multiplied by two zeta plus one. Why do we want to write that in that format? Because the gain of this transfer function is now units. 20 log of that gain, the gain will be zero. We can always split gain, uh, constant gains and the poles. We, have, we are separating that in different building blocks. So we want to write the expression in this way here. And omega zero here is the cutoff frequency of this particular pole. That's where the body plot will start to change at omega zero. We want to evaluate this transfer function for a wide range of frequencies. So we can replace S with J omega, where omega is the frequency of, that are, is now sweeping from small to uh, low to high. That's equation two. And you can see here, now we have an imaginary and the real part. Here is the real part. Here is the imaginary part. To remove that from the denominator, we multiply the function by the complex conjugate of it. So you see here, multiplying the function by the denominator divided by the denominator. So that's basically multiplying by one, but we flip the sign. And by flipping the sign, when you multiply the denominator, we now have a positive, uh, excuse me, we have a real number in the denominator. 
and after some simple manipulation, we get equation four. And then equation four is a lot easier to work with because we see clearly a real part and clearly a imaginary part here. And that's all you need now to calculate the phase and magnitude. We know that phase is the inverse tangent of the imaginary divided by the real. And you know that the magnitude is the square root of the square sum of these two elements. Okay. That's what we do next. I'm going to go through these steps quickly because it's um, simple math. You can attempt them on your own later. It's a good practice. So here is the equation we just got. And let's start by looking at the magnitude. And for that, we again need to do all those three cases. The frequency is much smaller than the cutoff frequency omega zero. The frequency is exactly the cutoff frequency and the frequency past the cutoff frequency. So we see here two frequencies. Omega is the frequency that we have control over is the input frequency and omega zero is the cutoff frequency. That frequency is characteristic, a, a characteristic of the system itself. We cannot change it. we need to now do the three cases as we did for the real pole and the real zero. So the first case is where the input frequency is much smaller than the cutoff frequency. Or in other words, the cutoff frequency is much greater than the input frequency, which makes omega over omega zero tending to zero. If that tends to zero, then this is zero, the entire imaginary part is zero, this is zero, this is zero, and you're left with the one plus zero J. What is the magnitude of that? It's one, All right, the magnitude is one, which is in decibels, 20 log of one, zero. What is the phase? Well, the phase here clearly only have a real part, no imaginary part. The real part is positive. If we plot this, we have one as the vector that represents the function, the phase is zero. Or inverse tangent of zero over one, zero. So up to the cutoff frequency, the phase is zero. The magnitude is zero decibels. This is exactly the same we found for the pole, the real pole on the real axis. Remember, up to the cutoff frequency, zero phase, zero magnitude. Same thing here for the complex case. Yeah. Questions here? No? Okay, so let's look at a case number two. Case number two now is the opposite. We are past the cutoff frequency. The input frequency is much greater than the cutoff frequency. Omega is much greater than omega zero, which means, for example, that here, if omega is much greater than omega zero, this is approximately omega zero, omega over omega zero squared. Because one is much smaller than that. And you can simplify the entire equation based on that same assumption. And when we do that, you can uh, verify this later. We are getting this. And now we can easily calculate the phase and the magnitude under that assumption. The phase and the magnitude can be calculated by taking the square of the real plus the square of the imaginary, uh, taking the square root of that, that's G. That's that a big square root there. And again, that simplifies. I'll let you simplify later if you if you are interested. This is simple math. But we should get something like this. 20 log of omega divided by omega zero, all to the power of negative two. This negative two can come to the front because this is a log function. And this results in negative 40 log of omega divided by omega zero. So the slope 
Now the, the body plot is negative 40 decibels per decade past the cutoff frequency. We can clearly see that if omega equals to omega zero, here we have zero. But if omega is 10 omega zero, then we have negative 40 log of 10, that's negative 40. If omega is 100 omega zero, we have negative 40 log of 100, which is negative 80. And when omega is 1000 times omega zero, then you have negative 120. Right. So now as we are increasing the frequency by a factor of 10, the body plot goes down by a factor of negative 40. Very interesting observation because this feels like we are having, we have two poles at real poles at the same location. That's the exact behavior you would see. For one real pole, we had the slope of negative 20 dB. If you had two real poles in the same place, it would be negative 40 dB. That's what we are seeing here. When you have a complex pole, well, the complex pole has two roots. Right? And now the slope is negative 40 dB. So this is analogous to having two poles, the real poles in the same location. Let's see if that holds for the phase as well. We take back the same, this is the same equation here, uh, circled in, in, in red. And you can look at the phase. Now we are making the phase tend to uh, the, the frequency is increasing. We are far from omega zero. So the frequency goes to infinity. And when that is the case, then both portions here will tend to zero. This tends to zero and that tends to zero. And then you may say, well, if both the real and imaginary parts are tending to zero, isn't the phase zero? Well, not really. Because you see there's a sign there and the sign is the real part and the imaginary part are both negative. So if you plot the transfer function and you put it there, we have the vector that is now in the third quadrant where both the imaginary and the real part are zero. And then you make the frequency tend to infinity, everybody goes to zero. And when it goes to, when this is going to zero, it goes to zero following that curve in the third quadrant. So the phase is actually not zero. The phase is negative or positive 180 degrees. So for convention, we say negative 180. Because it tends to zero, the magnitude tends to zero as the frequency increases within the third quadrant. That's not zero, it's negative 180 degrees. We can verify that mathematically using the tangent function and just making now the inverse tangent of the imaginary divided by the real part, make the frequency tends to infinity, we get negative 180 degrees. Aha, uh -huh. interesting. For the real pole, we had negative 90 degrees. For the complex pole, we have negative 180. Again, same thing as if we had two poles in the same location. The slope has increased from negative 20 to negative 40, the phase has decreased from negative 90 to negative 180. It is similar to having two poles, real poles, in the same location. That's what we'll get with a complex pole. So if we plot the phase and the magnitude, here is for the magnitude. That's what we discussed earlier. The slope is negative 40 dB. When you increase the frequency by a factor of 10, we go down by negative 40. And the phase will go from zero, in this case, before the cutoff frequency to negative 180 degrees. So you may say, well, if this is so similar to having two poles in the same location, job is pretty much done. Well, there's one difference. And this one difference occurs exactly at the cutoff frequency. That's the only difference. And that's case number three. So you have here the big function again, really imaginary. That's what we use to calculate everything. And now let's make omega equal to omega zero. 
if omega is equal to omega zero, then this will make the entire real part zero. And this is zero and this two here simplify and the whole thing simplifies to that. Negative zero minus J one over two over zeta. What is the magnitude? Well, the magnitude is 20 log of the imaginary parts plus the, the real part. That's what we get. Now that a negative one that we see there uh, can come to the front of the, equ the equation because it's a log function and this is the result. Simplifies to simply to negative 20 log of two zeta. So what is happening here? When zeta is, which, which is the damping ratio, is exactly 0 0.5, then you have two times 0 0.5 is one, 20 log of one is zero, the gain is zero dB. If zeta is greater than 0 0.5, greater than 0 0.5, then two times 0 0.5 is greater than one, and 20 log of something greater than one is positive. But because we have a negative sign in front of the 20, if zeta is greater than 0 0.5, then there is going to be a negative gain added to the body plot at the cutoff frequency. Conversely, if zeta is, is smaller than 0 0.5, then two times zero, uh, something smaller than 0 0.5 is smaller than one, 20 log of something is smaller than one is negative. Multiplied by the negative sign here becomes positive. So there is a positive bump in the Bode plot. Remember that a negative three decibels we saw for the complex for the real poles and the real zeros at the cutoff frequency. Well, here is something similar, except that it's not fixed. When you have a real pole or a real zero, at the cutoff frequency, we always have either plus or minus three dB. Here, it depends on the damping ratio. If the damping ratio is zero, uh, excuse me, the damping ratio is 0 0.5, that again is zero. If it is greater than 0 0.5, it goes down. If it is smaller than 0 0.5, it goes up. It's positive. And when zeta is zero, then that stands to infinity. And it would be uh, physically, physically impossible, but it is uh, it is mathematically possible. Okay, so that's the really the only difference. When you look at a complex pole, we have the same behavior as if we had two real poles in the same cutoff frequency, a squared, uh, just uh, omega something like s plus omega zero squared, exactly like that, with only difference. Because this would result in a slope of negative 40 past omega zero, and it would result in a phase shift of negative 180 degrees. The only difference occurs at omega zero, at the cutoff frequency, where the, the gain there is negative 20 log of two z. Let me give you some examples here. Uh, okay, we'll get there. So just a bit of more, uh, just a recap here. So in summary, we have this table. That's all we need to know. Before the cutoff frequency, zero phase, zero magnitude. Past the cutoff frequency, we have a slope of negative 40 dB per decade, a phase of negative 180. And at the cutoff frequency, the phase is negative 90, is a transition between 0 and negative 180. And the magnitude is negative 20 log of 2 zeta. This is analogous to having two equal real poles, with the exception, once again, of what is happening right here. Here is the phase. Here's what a body plot would look like. Uh, zero before the cutoff frequency, past the cutoff frequency, slope of negative 40. And then here in the, this cutoff frequency, we may have something that is, resembles that. If zeta is smaller than 0 0.5, something that resembles this. If zeta is greater than 0 0.5, and simply would simply be zero if zeta is exactly 0 0.5. 
the phase goes from zero to negative 180 degrees. This is, of course, an approximation here because it's more like a smooth function. And the window size here, this transition, is a function of zeta. The smaller zeta, the sharper that transition is, the greater zeta, the smoother that transition is. A good approximation to see where that starts and where that ends is omega zero times five to the power of the negative zeta. Where does that come from? I don't know is what it is. It's just empirically determined to be like that. Zero omega zero times five exponential of negative zeta omega zero five to this uh, to, to the power of zeta. This is a good approximation to determine where it starts, where it ends. So it's going to depend on the value of zeta. And again, this is determined empirically. There is uh, it's just an approximation. Anyways, we are always doing an approximation when you do body plots by hand. You can use the MATLAB to get a better picture of it. Here's some examples. So I'm taking this random function, one over s squared plus two zeta omega zeta s plus one. What is omega zero here? What's omega zero? The cutoff frequency. One, uh, one radians per second. It's a uh, one radians per second is where the slope will change. So before one, we have a gain of zero. Past one, we see now that it's going down by negative 40 dB per decade. We can tell because from 10, excuse me, from one radians per second to 10 radians per second, it went down by negative 40. And look what happened at the cutoff frequency. Depending on the value of zeta, we see that a bump happening there. And this is negative 20 log of two zeta. If zeta is smaller than 0 0.5, it goes up. If zeta is greater than 0 0.5, it goes down at the cutoff frequency. And if zeta is exactly 0 0.5, then two times 0 0.5 is one, 20 log of one is zero. That would be zero dB that occurs for this curve here. Oh, I think it's the green one, actually. The green curve right there, or one of those, okay? And that depends, again, on the damping ratio. If we are dealing with, once again, a real pole, two real poles at, zero point, uh, at one radians per second, so if we had something like this, real poles instead, we would see something very similar, but it would be something like that. And the gain here would be negative three times two, negative six dB. Remember that a negative three comes from one pole. We have two poles at the same point, so negative six. And the phase would be negative 90 degrees for each, of this poles, and then we'll go to negative 90. So the only difference again, of course, right there. Okay. Other than that is the equivalent of having two poles. That's the last building block we needed. If this was a zero instead of a pole, everything would flip. The phase would go from zero to plus 180. The magnitude would now increase by 40 dB per decade. And then, of course, the uh, pole and zero thing would also shift. Uh, excuse me, the part that didn't make any, any sense. The, um, the magnitude at the cutoff frequency would become plus 20 log of two zeta or a zero. So it would have the opposite effect. When zeta would be positive, uh, when zeta was greater than 0 0.5, then it would go up and smaller than 0 0.5, then we see that a bump going down. So just everything basically shifts with a negative sum. Any questions before we 
do uh, some exercise. Yeah, no, not at all. No questions? All good? Okay. So let's do, I'm gonna skip this resonance frequency just for information, I'll put it here. This is the point where the body plot will reach its maximum value. Let's do uh, exercise. Let's just start with exercise two. A low pass filter is a filter that passes signals with a frequency lower than a certain cutoff frequency and attenuates signal with frequencies higher than the cutoff frequency. A hypothetical filter has the following transfer function, sketch the frequency response. So if you design the filter properly, we should see a gain of zero up to the cutoff frequency. And then we want to pass the cutoff frequency, we want to attenuate the signal. We want the output to decrease as the frequency increases. We should see the body plot then kicking in at that point. Okay, so that's our function. What do we do first? Well, the first thing we need to do here is to sketch this transfer function in the form we need for body plot analysis. That is, we need to create the denominator plus one at the bottom there. So we can divide the top at the bottom of the equation by one. So that is S over four over two squared plus 0 0.4 times S over four plus one. I just divided the whole thing by four and then I wrote that as S divided by two squared, which is one fourth. That's the step one. For our body plot analysis, we want the cutoff frequency to be shown here, but also under S. So I can rewrite this in the form of one over S plus two squared plus 0 0.4 divided by two times S divided by two plus one. So now we have this in the standard form. The form that we used at the very beginning here. S divided by omega zero squared plus two zeta times S divided by omega zero plus one. Okay, so that's how we can rewrite it. Does, does this make sense? You see where that com comes from? Yeah? What is omega zero? That's two radians per second. And what is two zeta? Two zeta equals two. Zero point two. Let me write the standard form here as divided by omega zero squared plus two zeta s over omega zero plus one. Omega zero is two, two zeta equals two, 0 0.4 over two, which is 0 0.2, zeta is 0 0.1. Are we good? Okay, now that we determine zeta, we can determine that a, what, a, what happens at the cutoff frequency, that a bump or that a decrease in the magnitude at the cutoff frequency. 
So when zeta, when omega equals to omega zero, the magnitude is negative 20 log of two zeta. So that is negative 20 log of two zeta is 0 0.2. And this is approximately 14 dB. So at the cutoff frequency, we have an increase of 14 dB. The reason I say an increase is to be very precise with the language. I'm not saying that the body plot is 14 dB. I'm saying that there is going to be an increase of 14 dB. It's not the same. Right. In this particular example, it will be 14 dB, but it's just because before that, it, the body plot is zero. So we are going to add 14 to it and making it 14. But if the body plot was not zero, was let's say 10 before the cutoff frequency, then it would increase by 14, it would be 24, and then go back to that point, right? So this is not the absolute value of the magnitude, is it the increase in magnitude we will see at the cutoff frequency. Are we good here up to this point? Yeah. Okay. So here, let's just start with the body plot. Let me copy these again. And plot it here. And we have the cutoff frequency, the magnitude, excuse me, the magnitude at omega equals to omega zero is going to increase by 14 dB. The cutoff frequency is two radians per second. Let me place that uh, around here. Two radians per second. So this one you can make 20. This one you can make 200. I don't need to go 10, 20. You can do whatever I want. Right? So I'm doing multiples of two because that's a specifically one decade that will help us with the body plot. So the cutoff frequency is two radians per second. What is the magnitude of the body plot before two? Before we reach two, zero is zero. So let's put this at zero dB and it will be zero up to the cutoff frequency. At the cutoff frequency, we determine that is going to be an increase in magnitude by 14 dB. The increase, we're not making it 14 dB, we are increasing it by 14 dB. Turns out we are starting at zero. So zero plus 14 is 14. So this goes up by plus 14 dB. This value here is 14. And then it comes back. It comes back to where it started. So it comes back to zero. Now we pass the cutoff frequency, what happens? Now that we pass the cutoff frequency, what happens? It goes down, it goes down by, by negative 40 dB per frequency decay. So we are now going back to zero at two. When you reach 20 dB, what is the magnitude? Sorry, when you reach 20 radians per second, what is the magnitude? Negative 40, very good. So we are at zero at two. We increase the frequency by a factor of 10, we go to 20. The body plot decreases by a factor of 20. Uh, 40, so it goes to negative 40. And when you go to 200, what is the magnitude there? Negative 80. This is now going down at a constant rate of negative 40 dB per frequency decade. So this is one decade, 10 times, it went down by 
party. And same thing happened here. We increased this by one decade. It went down by 40. What is the phase? Well, the phase starts at, at, phase starts at zero. Right? There are no, no poles or zeros at the origin. The phase starts at zero. And the phase goes to negative 180 degrees at the cutoff frequency. So it should be something like that. And you are going to interpolate that the best we can. This is probably not a very good one. Something like that. And passing by negative 90 degrees at the cutoff frequency. This transition here should be very sharp. If you plot in MATLAB, you see a transition uh, that's a lot sharper than what, uh, what I see here. Okay, And that's, that's, it. that's the body plot for this specific transfer function. And now the body plot decreases by a factor of negative 20. Any questions? Negative 40 dB. No, it's not there. Any questions? Yep. Why did they bring? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, sorry, I missed, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, you are right. So there's a type here, this is divided by two. Yeah, yeah. And should also, sorry, I can't, couldn't hear. Oh, should it be one, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so uh, I made two mistakes here. The top is divided by one. Let's go back to what we started here. Just when I copy that, I, uh, I think I made the same mistake here. Yeah, so this is one. Good catch. So, I'm, okay, let's do this again just to clarify any issues here. So, we're dividing the top and the bottom by one. So, one over S squared over four plus 0.2 S over four plus one, which is the same as one over S over two, everything is squared, plus 0.4 over, uh, over two times s over two plus one. Yeah. And then this is 0 0.2. And what I'm leaving s divided by two because that 0 0.2 is the two zeta that we need just to highlight it, right? And then you have s squared divided by omega zero squared and you have s divided by omega zero in this, uh, like the standard form calls. For. Okay, good, good catch. Any other questions? Okay, so let me ask you one question. If you don't have questions for me, I have questions for you. We know that at negative, at a 20 dB, uh, excuse me, we know that at 20 radians per second, the magnitude is 40 dB. We know that at 200, one decade for now, the magnitude is negative 80 dB. What is the magnitude halfway through? What is halfway here is 110? Yeah. Is it 110 or no, 110? So if we look at a 110 radians per second, what is the magnitude? That's a trap. Right, that's the trap. It's not negative 60. Well, that's, that's the problem. It's not negative 60. Why is that not negative 60? Because log is not a linear op operator. If you go halfway through, we are not at negative 60. What exactly is the magnitude? Why is that not, not 60? Because it's not linear. Log is not linear. So let's see if you can calculate that. 
let's take a point of reference. We are at negative 40, uh, excuse me, we are at 20 dB, 20 radians per second, we have a magnitude of negative 40. So let's take this point as reference. We are starting here. We are at 20 and we are going down by a factor of 40 dB per decade. So if we go from 20 dB to 200, that's 10, All right? That's 10. And then to 40 log of 10 is 40, we go to negative 80. That's how we are calculating the phases, the, 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 the slope, right? We know that it goes to ne negative 40 by, when you multiply the frequency by 10. So if you go to 2000, it's gonna be negative 120 and so on. We want, don't want to go from 20 to 200. We want to stop at negative, at a 110. So just replace this with 110. And what is the result here? Does anybody have a calculator? This is just uh, make sure that uh, you use log 10. And if you're using MATLAB, make sure that you write log 10. If you just do log, it will assume that is the natural logarithmic function. Negative 69, okay, negative 69.6 dB. So it's not exactly halfway. It's a bit, it's a bit more than that, yeah. And if you wanna go to 150, then it would be 150 divided by 20. So the, the key is, uh, again, what you are doing here, we are taking the, observation that the slope goes down by negative 40 dB per, de per decade, but you are not going on a full decade. We are stopping at 110. If we were going on a full decade, that it would be 20, uh, 200 divided by 20, that's 10. That's a factor of 10, but now we are doing 110 divided by 20, okay? So keep this in mind. The log function is not a linear function. Is, is this part clear? Does this make sense? Okay, so what if we got, let's see if you, you make sure you understand this. Instead of taking this reference point as being a negative 40, what if we, we take this point, we took this point here at zero? How would the, the equation look like to calculate the magnitude at 110? It would be zero minus 40 log of, Zero is the starting point, is the magnitude where we are starting. We are starting at two, right? And we are stopping at 110. I should give the same result. Okay, because this is the same as that, uh, log 110 minus 40, so should should give us exactly the same thing. Yep, all right, any questions? No? Questions from home? Okay, so the message here is relatively simple. Let me find uh, an interesting example. Okay, let's do one of these skill checks. I think let's do a uh, skill check one. Let me check. Yeah, this, this one I took from um, final exam, I think. This one is from a final exam. And then I think the skill checks three is from a deferred final exam. This is a bit more complicated because you have a zero, a pole of the origin. Which one should, you, should we do? Should we do the one of the pole of the origin or the one with the real pole? Hmm? Do 
the real Paul? Sorry, I just couldn't hear you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just afraid that uh, it might be too much of a jump. So how comfortable are you with the example we just did? Was, did, did that make perfect sense? Is there still things that we would like me to clarify then? Then it will do the easier one. So I think it will make more sense that way. But if you if it's still a bit confusing, let's do the easy one. If it's fine, then we'll do the complicated one. Which one do you want me to do? Yeah. Makes sense. All right. Let's do the uh, the easy one then. Because his suggestion was for those at home. And the next lecture is all about exercises. So this is starts easy and then is scale uh, complicated a bit. Okay, so let's do a skills check one. So this is a unit feedback loop with an open loop transfer function like that. Draw the body plot for k equals to 75. And then calculate the phase and the magnitude at one radians per second for k equals to 75. Question B, we know how to do. I'm just going to do A. So this is 75 divided by s plus 1, s squared plus 4s plus 25. What do we do first? We need to write both of these in the standard form for body plot analysis. So we're starting with the real pole. Well, the real pole is has a magnitude of, it's a cutoff frequency of one radians per second. So that doesn't need really much, right? It's just like that. Let me rewrite my one here. And the second part now is the with the complex pole, we have a damping ratio smaller than one here for sure. So we have to now put this in the standard form. So divide everything by 25. What do we have? We have S squared divided by 25, which is the same as S over five squared plus four over five times S over five, which is the same as four S over 25 plus one, and then the top of the equation also becomes one because we divided the whole thing by, uh, sorry, it becomes three because we divide the whole thing by 25. So 75 divided by 25 is three. What is two zeta here? Two zeta equals two. Four over five, very good. And omega zero for the complex part is five. So we have two cutoff frequencies. We have a cutoff frequency for from the real pole at one, and you have a cutoff frequency for the complex pole at five radians per second. Okay, so let's start this. So what we could do here is to create three separate body plots, one for the constant gain, one for the real pole, one for the, the complex pole, and then add everything up. But that will take way too much time. So instead, let's um, do this the other way where we just look at the low frequencies and then we start increasing the frequency. And then as in the process, we add the poles and zeros that we encounter in the way. If you go to the very low frequencies, we are to the left of all poles and all zeros. The only thing acting on the body plot is the constant gain three, right? So if you go to the decrease the frequency, the one is one, the other one is five. If you go lower than that, then the only thing acting there is the gain three. So we have 20 log of three. And 20 log of three is approximately 9.5 dB. So the body plot will be constant at 9.5 dB up to the first cutoff frequency. And the first cutoff frequency is one radians per second. It's right here. So 
So we're going to go from 9.5. Yeah, up to one radians per second. And that is 9.5 dB. What is the magnitude at one radians per second? Remember that at the cutoff frequency for a real pole, there is a decrease of negative three dB. I told you in the last lecture, we can neglect that. We don't need to worry about it. But I'm going to include it here just to get this as uh, accurate as possible. So I'm going to include that negative 3 dB that it comes from the cutoff frequency of the real pole. So at the cutoff frequency, we have a slight decay here. And that brings the body plot down by negative 3, which means that instead of 9.5, we have 6.5. Uh, which is 9.5 minus 3. The, where is this 3 coming from again? That's the gain at the cutoff frequency of the real pole. Then what happens now? Now the body plot will in, just encounter a zero, uh, a pole, a real pole. So the slope of the body plot will change from 0 to negative 20 dB per decade. If you now increase the frequency by a factor of 10, it goes down by negative 20. So if we go to 10 to the power of one, what would be the magnitude there? If here we are at 6.5, and you go to 10, it would be 6.5 minus 20. The problem is we can't go that far because there is a pole at five radius per second. There is the complex cutoff frequency at five radians per second. So we have to stop at, at five. So if that's one, this is two, three, four, five. So around the five here. We have another pole. And this pole is the complex pole. So the slope of the transfer, the, the body plot goes down by negative 20 dB per decade. If we were going up to 10, then it would be negative 14. But the problem is, once again, 13.5. Uh, but the problem is that we have to stop at 5. So what is the magnitude at 5? At 10 to the power of 0, at 1 radians per second, we were at 6.5. The slope is going down by negative 20 log of the frequency is starting at one, starting at one. So if we are going to 10, it would be 10 divided by one. One is where we are starting. So that's a factor of 10, but we can't go that far because we have to stop at five. So instead we can just write five over one to determine what we have at five radians per second. And that should be, if my calculation is correct here, negative 7.4 dB. So we are starting to go down and you go to negative 7.4. What happened here? Well, we just went down, we, we stopped at five. What happens at this point? Now we have a complex pole to deal with. The complex pole is at five radians per second. And now the complex pole has a damping ratio that will either make this go up or down. What is that? Well, how much is that? Well, it's negative 20 log of two zeta. The negative 20 log of 2 zeta in this case is negative 20 log of 4 over 5. This is plus 2 dB. So 
So at the cutoff frequency of this pole, because of the damping ratios is smaller than 0 0.5, the, this thing is going to go up by uh, going to go up by two decibels. So if it's negative 7.4, we are adding two decibels to it. We'll see a little bump here. And then we'll come back to where it started. And the top here will be 7 point, negative 7.4 plus 2, which is negative 5.4 dB. And then it will come back to where it was before. Now we, are, we can start to increase the frequency again. What happens to the body plot? What is the slope of the body plot now? Negative 60. Very good. Why is that not negative 40? Because of the real pole. The real pole made the slope just after it negative 20 dB per decade. We passed a complex pole. The complex pole adds negative 40 to whatever exists before it. So it was negative 20. Now it is negative 40. So if you go to one decade from now, so this is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. If you go to 50, what is the magnitude? Is whatever we have now, which is negative five point, sorry, negative 7.4, because we went up to negative five and then back. Minus 60, so it's negative 67.4 around here. Because the slope now is negative 60 dB per decade. This is one decade, and this is negative 60. So if at that point we had negative 7.4, here we are at negative 67.4. Okay. So this one is a bit tricky because you have to stop at halfway here between don't, don't have full decades between uh, cutoff frequencies, right? But we can uh, work around that. Let's look at the phase. Where does the phase start? To, from 50 to 100. Yeah, so good. So if we want to go to 100, uh, what would be the magnitude there? So if we are at a 50, what is the magnitude of 50? Is negative 67.4. So right, this is at 50 radians per second. And you want to know what the magnitude is at 100. So what do you have? Negative 67.4 minus the slope, 60, log of how much the frequency is changing. We are starting at 50, and you want to go to 100, right? It, this, is, this makes sense because if you were going to 500, uh, 500 would be one decade, it would be another negative 60, right? Because then 500 divided by 50 is 10, but we are stopping at 50 at a 100. So it's 100 divided by 5. That's 2. I don't know how much this is. But around, I don't know. But that would be the way to calculate. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, somebody here is asking, isn't uh, 2 times 4 over uh, 
uh, four, two times four divided by five. No, it was omega two zeta omega n. Two zeta omega, two zeta is four over five. Two zeta is four over five, All right? So 20 log of two zeta is 20 log of four, four over five. All right, so let's do the phase quickly because they're running out of time. Where does the phase start? Starts at zero. Now there are no poles or zeros at the origin. We are starting at zero. We start at zero and go to the first pole. The first pole makes or adds negative 90 because it's a real pole. And then we encounter the new pole, the complex pole adds negative 180. So we go down to 270. And we can now interpolate this to the best of our abilities. Something like that. That it will pass at a roughly negative 45 here and negative 100 around there. Had no. No, because the the, the, the gain the the, uh, the phase of a gain is zero. And the phase of a gain is, is zero. If you remember, then uh, uh, if we plot that, so they say g of s equals to k, is just a real part, right? So when you plot it. We have K here, that's the phase of zero. But the angle here is zero. But if K is negative, then it's on the other side. And then the phase is negative or positive 108. Right? That, that becomes the phase here. But we are there with a positive gain of three. So the phase is simply zero, doesn't, doesn't change. We'll see a plateau. Uh, what, what do you mean by a plateau? Yes, well, it, it, if these frequencies were far enough from one another, then it would indeed plateau a negative 90. And then uh, after the plateau go down, but they are so close that it will be a smooth function. Yeah, but otherwise you're right, they should be a plateau. Yeah. 